So today we're going to talk about what men are looking for women that sets you apart from every other woman out there. This is the type of guy that's going to want to give you everything in the relationship. So we're going to spend a few minutes exploring this. And one common thread I have heard over and over and over and over and over again from men. And, and, and let me read backtrack when I say this. I've heard this from women who, I mean, I've heard this from the women I've coached. I've heard this so many times. A man would say, being with her feels like home. Being with her feels like home. And, and, and I'll be candid with you. I've said that myself. So today we're going to explore what home really represents. And we're going to use an acronym in a moment um, to illustrate this point, because I believe that when you're experiencing this, this actually sets you apart from every other woman. Now, I want to acknowledge that if you're watching this today, it's Mother's Day. And given that it's Mother's Day, I actually have a picture of my ex-wife and my children. While I'm sharing this, I want to actually acknowledge her for a moment, Erin. She maintained my last name, so, so it's, it's Mrs. Asley because her children are Asley. And I want to honor her for a moment because she was and is a fantastic mother. And while our relationship didn't work out, she's a fantastic human being. And I think it's important that we recognize that men and women alike might be wounded. They might be misaligned. They might be hurt. They might be struggling, all these different things. But I, I believe that most human beings are good people. And I think when you acknowledge that most human beings are good people, particularly those that have been in your life in the past. Why I'm giving her props is because I truly recognize that she's a good person outside of our relationship. She's a wonderful mother. And not every woman is a great mother. Not every man is a great father. That's certainly the case. But I want to give her props on Mother's Day. So to Aaron Asley, thank you for being a great mom to my children. And certainly she's been a good friend since my son passed away. And there's a picture of both my boys behind me. And many of you know I lost a child. Okay. What does this have to do with setting you apart from other women? Okay. So I said earlier, it feels like being at home. What does home represent? It represents your space of peace. It represents calm. It represents that space that you can be by yourself. Or excuse me, not by yourself. Excuse me. You can be yourself. Like that's that's the when a, when you are think about this for a moment. Have you ever been in a relationship with a man that you could just be your authentic self? you know, warts and all, so to speak, when you can be your authentic self and you feel safe, you feel at peace, you feel at home. There's a reason why home represents peace because it's the safest place to be on the planet. When you're at, when you're with this person, that's what sets you apart, that it, you feel safe. So I've created an acronym to explore this conversation, or not, I didn't, I mean, under the concept of peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, P-E-A-C-E, -E, peace. There's something about being with a person that you feel at peace with. And when you don't feel at peace, when you feel agitation, when you feel doubts, when you feel frustration, there's going to be friction in the relationship. Now, some might say that we have to, and I, I want to say that if you can't overcome your frictions, if you can't come to a general consensus in the relationship, if, you're, if your friction, you have to then decide, is this person worth healing past our frictions to heal past these spaces? That's part of what being in an all-in all relationship represents is my fear, my, my care for you is going to outweigh my fear of failure. Let me repeat that. My care for you is going to outweigh my fear for, of failure. I'm using failure as an example. And ultimately, I was sharing this in a video yesterday, but I was watching a video with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. And the essence of what they were saying is the relationship is worth it for them to, to you know, resolve their differences. The fact is... People, excuse me, people, 
It's, the fact is, we're all different human beings. We're not perfectly aligned or alike with one another. So what's going to set you apart from everyone else? I talked about the peace process. So the P stands for positive possibilities, positive possibilities. What this represents is beginner's mind. You know, sadly, for those of us in midlife, um, we've had multiple relationships and we can have possibly multiple hurts and pains in our lives. And if you've had multiple hurts, multiple pains, that can oftentimes make a person very jaded, bitter, and, and resistant to being open to love. I once mentioned this in video, and I've mentioned this before, I've gone on first dates with women where I can literally see every man that's ever hurt her standing behind her just by her languaging, just by her communication about her past relationships, about her past in general. That pain is so prevalent that you can literally, it's like one of those uh, you know, movies where you see the ghost right behind them, right? I can see that because they 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 no longer embrace positive possibilities they no longer embrace beginner's mind beginner's mind is is recognition that anytime you meet someone new something completely different can happen i mean when i say different something incredibly positive can happen as one of my dear friends always says to me go in totally open now, that doesn't mean open and exposed and being naked, you know, it doesn't. And But at the same time, if we have armor up, if we already have walls and armor, it makes it very difficult to actually connect with another human being at a heart centered level. When we have armor up, when we have walls, because without that positive possibility, without that beginner's mind, oftentimes what happens is people. See, there's this expectation that men must climb to the highest room of the tallest tower. Well, guess what? I don't have the patience to do that. I don't have the bandwidth to do that. I'm no longer that young warrior that's going to chase. And oftentimes, what is a man chasing when he's going up to the highest room of the tallest tower? He's chasing physical intimacy. You've witnessed this before. You've heard the narratives. Men love the hunt and men love the chase. Oh, are they chasing a fully committed relationship that's going to navigate the challenges of a relationship? Is, it, is he chasing really the understanding of shared values, blendable lifestyle, and emotional maturity? Is he chasing a physical connection? So recognize that if you want to set yourself apart from other women, then, in, then I am inviting you to incorporate positive possibilities in your life. Release the fear. Let go of the fear. I get it. It's scary out there. It is so scary to go on a first date. It's so scary to give your heart to another human being. But when you find that individual sovereignty within yourself and overcome the fear, because going outside of your comfort zone might be easy to revel in the, the negative. But shifting to positive possibilities, that beginner's mind will set you apart because so many women are in negativity that it's going to be a breath of fresh air for the man that you're operate from this positive possibility. Number two, or the E, excuse me, embrace the present moment. Embrace the present moment. Some months ago, I was speaking to a friend of mine and she had a, uh, she told me she met her soulmate. Now, she happened to be out of country. He was in the United States. She was uh, traveling in South America. They connected through a dating app and they began FaceTiming with one another, okay? And for weeks and weeks, they're FaceTiming one another and he chose to fly out to meet her. And she got so ahead of herself, so radically ahead of herself. She calls me up and said, Jonathan, I found the one. This is the guy. I mean, we have this amazing connection. We have, it's so off the charts. It's so wonderful how aligned we are with one another. It is just beyond amazing. And sure enough, he flew out there um, and she picked him up at the airport. And right off the bat, it turns out that she didn't, think he looked as like she did FaceTime. So, um, but he looked a little bit more tattered than um, what she'd originally thought, but she's like, I'm going to put past the looks kind of thing. 
And uh, she and she and he came to her home. Okay. And they went out and had a fantastic first evening. They ended up having physical intimacy. He was supposed to stay there for two weeks. And by the third day, she's like, I don't like this guy. What he is in person is completely different than what I projected. So, and, and she ended up leaving within four or five days. I mean, there was a, some real friction. Um, so why I'm bringing this up is embrace the present moment, not getting ahead of yourself. You know, I mean, there's an old saying that women will start putting on a man's last name uh, after a first date. Okay, you have to recognize that the process of getting to know someone is a building block, a building block of experiences. This is why many of you have heard my narrative. Um, I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together doing social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. OK, what I recognize why I'm saying this is each building block requires being present in the moment, not getting ahead of yourself. And certainly, as I said earlier, in the positive possibilities, not being stuck in your past, embracing the present moment. And when you embrace the present moment, you can be acutely aware of differences. And as I said earlier, we are going to have differences with another human being. There are going to be differences. When you're embracing the present moment, not getting your head of yourself or not being stuck in the past, you can really pay attention to alignment, alignment. See, alignment is how we, we bond with another human being beyond the physical component of it. It is through alignment with one another and by being present to the experience. And why this sets you apart? Because we men, okay, we men, on some level, expect you to get attached to us faster than we get attached to you. We actually, it's one of the reasons why a lot of men are commitment phobic or, or have walls up because we have an expectation that you're going to do that. It's a false expectation, but nonetheless, it's there. I think this is actually somewhat instinctual. I think for hundreds of thousands of years, women have been so dependent upon men for survival, that it's almost in your DNA to want commitment more so than us. So when you actually embrace the present moment, you're actually, you're, you're demonstrating that I'm not going to get ahead of myself with you. We, we both have to earn this relationship. We both have to earn this relationship. And we do this by embracing the present moment. The A stands for accept yourself. This is all about self-love. If you're familiar with my work, what the heck is self-love anyway? A journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. There's a saying, the quality of our life is predicated on the quality of our relationships. I believe Esther Perel said this. I think the most important relationship we have if, is with ourselves. As I said earlier about our sovereignty, when we accept ourselves, when we can really embrace, I, you know, at, at, by the way, at this stage in our lives, for those of us in midlife, this is all about embracing who we are. We're not perfect human beings. We have insecurity. We have flaws. We have fears. It's okay to embrace those, but more importantly, embrace the qualities that make you a great catch. I invite every one of you to write down what makes you a great catch? What makes you different than other women? What sets you apart from other women? Write that down. By writing it down, you, you memorialize it for yourself. But more importantly, it enters the, I think it's the reticular activating system of your brain. It's right there in your consciousness. And so I invite you to to, and this is also an invitation to do personal development, self-help and spiritual work and therapy to heal the childhood wounds and adult traumas that make us oftentimes have walls up and not be able to embrace the present moment. This is why I'm a big, if you haven't read the book, The Hoffman Process, The Hoffman Process, this is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and adult traumas. And many of you have a broken picker. 
This is where someone like myself can be of support to you. Check out the links below to, um, to schedule a discovery call with me. My whole area of expertise is to both help you identify who's the right person for you and ask the critical questions based on your personality to determine if he's worth your effort. Because you're doing all this work, well, you've got to ask yourself, is he making commensurate effort as you are? And this leads us to the C, and that's certainty. What sets you apart from other women is that your actions consistently match your words. Your, per, your, your actions consistently match the way you've presented yourself. See, certainty is how we feel safe. And we talked about feeling at home earlier, feeling safe when a person is consistent. And by the way, everything I'm sharing this video goes both ways, by the way. Ladies, you need to be with a man who demonstrates consistency. And you must do so yourself because inconsistent people create doubts in another person's mind. And when you have doubts, you don't feel safe. And when you don't feel safe, you don't feel at home. You don't feel at peace. Because that's what home represents is feeling at peace in this space. And so certainty is how we create um, real bonds with another human being. And I, by the way, I'll tell you, because of dating sites and dating apps, there's so much uncertainty going on because you have this false belief that somebody can just be right around the corner. And, and just remember, the dating apps have algorithms to keep you single. It, and what that does is it keeps us on, in a state of uncertainty, of constant uncertainty. And so the dating apps have been actually, as much as I'm a proponent for using dating sites, they also have, have poisoned us to cause us to be rather dysfunctional, to create mixed signals. You know, I, I think, unfortunately, men and women's behavior in the dating marketplace has been partially curated because of all the bombardment of this false sense of options, this artificial intimacy that's created. And ultimately, how a relationship is built through through is beyond the devices. It's beyond the surface. It requires going deeper than the surface. And by doing so, we create safety. We create peace with another human being. So that certainty, your actions matching your words. And the E in peace stands for engage the fun. Engage the fun. Engage the fun. Folks. And by the way, can someone write the peace process down? I'll repeat it in a moment. But being playful, being flirty, being sexy. I got to tell you something. I, I've gone on a number of dates where women are wearing resting bitch face. Oh, by the way, I, my coffee mug says swear a little, you'll feel better. So I said the B word. That resting anger, that, you know, like there's no fun, there's no play. I think, I think early on you have to establish fun, play, humor sexiness right from the very get-go. It's like we have to, you know, by taking down the walls, by being, being open, as I said earlier, being vulnerable, being authentic, being transparent, but most importantly, understanding that, you know what, ha no matter what happens when you meet this man for the first time, or you've been dating him for a short period of time, you're going to be okay. So you can be more playful, be more flirty, because you know, if it doesn't work out, that's okay too. That's what positive possibilities, bringing it back to full, full circle, is all about. Being in that state of play, flirtiness, sexiness, because that's why we're doing this. You know, I mean, beside the being teammates with one another, why you do it with a romantic partner is because you want someone to play with. You want to be physically intimate with them. So the E stands for engage the fun. So just to repeat the peace process, which sets you apart from every man out there, positive possibilities, embrace the present moment. The e, excuse me, the E stands for embrace the present moment. The A stands for accept yourself. The C stands for certainty, and the E stands for engaging, engage the fun. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear all your thoughts.
As always, if you have that, if you, if you find value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, hey, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. You can join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. You can follow me on Instagram. You can get the books I recommend or you can get my dating vows, which is listed below. And that's going to set you apart from every other woman out there. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we can all use more love in our lives. And once again, I want to thank my wonderful mother to my children, Erin Asley. Thank you for being a fantastic mother to them. You deserve to be honored today, just like all of you deserve to be honored today. For those of you who, have, uh, who it, certainly your parents deserve to be honored, uh, your mother, and certainly if you are a mother, you deserve to be honored. Because guess what? Being a mother, um, that's a big undertaking on so many different levels. And I think it's important that we divorce people, honor our ex-spouse, because especially those with children, because you know what? It's, there's a lot of heavy lifting in raising a child. And I want to give, and by the way, for those that don't have children, guess what? You do a lot of good in the world as well. So I don't want to discount those that don't have children, but I certainly want to honor those because it is a heavy duty undertaking and big hugs to all the moms out there. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. Wishing you a super duper wonderful day.